Hello, I'm Nuala McGovern. and this is Outside Source. And we're going to find out the latest from Brazil, where the far-right candidate is leading the polls for Sunday's presidential elections. Welcome to the programme. The FBI report into allegations of sexual misconduct against President Trump's Supreme Court nominee, Brett Kavanaugh, has been released, but not to the public, to the 100 senators who will vote to confirm Judge Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court. A confirmation vote is expected on Saturday, and it's fair to say a lot of people, both Democrats and Republicans, are very angry. I want to bring you uh, some pictures that came in to us. People marched. Senator Feinstein. Now remember, Judge Kavanaugh's no, uh, confirmation depends on Republican senators voting strictly along party lines. Let's take a look at the numbers. Uh, there's a 51-49 Senate majority for Republicans. So everyone's remarks following the release of this report has been closely watched. One person who's left us no doubt of what he thinks, where he stands, Republican majority leader, this man, Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell. Well, those allegations include those made by Dr. Christine uh, Blasey Ford. She says she was sexually assaulted by Brett Kavanaugh when she was 15 and he was 17. I want to bring you uh, a picture that's come into us. This is the latest Time cover. Pre Professor Ford there. Uh, also, the cover made out of the quotes from her testimony last week and the headline, Her Lasting Impact. Well, that remains to be seen. But what of the accusations the FBI investigation was not given enough time to do a comprehensive job. Let's hear from a former FBI agent. I now, there's no question this ignited debate. One US commentator, let me bring up Sarhed Ahmari, uh, says the vicious campaign to destroy Kavanaugh and his family is reminding Republicans there are worse things than Trump's outbursts. It's reuniting the right. It's even been talked about on the red carpet. Someone else who has weighed in on this topic is Julia Roberts. Here's what she told my colleague Philippa Thomas when she was asked, what does this mean for women? Julia Roberts. Let's speak now to Anthony Zerker in Washington, D.C. Hi, Anthony. Good to have you with us. So I suppose my first question to you, really, because we're looking at who's go intending to vote in what way, listening to the remarks. Has anyone changed position, if you know? ...to us from Washington, D.C. Now, let me turn to this story. The Netherlands, U.K. and the U.S., they all came out today accusing Russia of cyber attacks. Dutch authorities say they caught four Russian intelligence officials in the act. They say they were in a car park uh, near the United Nations Chemical Weapons Watchdog that was in The Hague, Hague uh, back in April. They've also presented this trove of intelligence information from the case, as Anna Holligan will show and report. You can take a look at some of those details also online that Anna was showing us. Now, at the time, the International Chemical Weapons Watchdog was investigating, you might remember, the nerve agent attack that was taking place in the UK. Also, they were investigating a chemical attack in Syria. Now, the British authorities say the men from Russia's GRU, as it's called, military intelligence, were trying to clean up the mess that it had made in Salisbury. Here's Britain's ambassador to the Netherlands. The GRU. Now, the official reaction from Moscow is that it's more Western spy mania. Let's hear from Olga Ivshina, BBC Russia service. Thanks very much to Olga for that. Now, the US Justice Department, they also indicted seven Russian intelligence officers for a hacking a different target today. Let's hear more from my colleague, Barbara Pletosher. A man has been sentenced to 14 years in jail after trafficking and grooming children into selling crack cocaine and heroin for him. It's the first time the police have secured child trafficking convictions against a drug dealer under the Modern Slavery Act. Zakaria Mohammed from Birmingham admitted running what police call a county lines drug network, sending children out into provincial towns to sell drugs. Mohammed was caught after two missing 15-year-old boys were found in a squalid and freezing flat in January. A surveillance operation identified a car registered to Mohammed, making regular trips from Birmingham to an address in Lincoln where missing boys were found. This is Outside Source, live from the BBC newsroom. Our lead story... Let us turn to Indonesia. Rescue workers on the Indonesian island of Sulawesi are right now working through the night, making a final effort to try and find any survivors of last week's tsunami and earthquake. The government has tentatively said it will end its official rescue operation on Friday, but there are calls for the search to continue for at least another week. Let me show you uh, the city of Palu. Now, that is one of the worst affected areas there. Electricity has been reconnected to some buildings, and a few shops and a few banks have reopened. The number of people that has died is more than 1,500. It is still expected to rise, though, because take a look at this. 
Um, also, underneath the rubble of the Mercure Hotel, French rescue workers found a survivor nearly a week on from the disaster. One father has been digging with his bare hands to try and find his daughter, but he ended up rescuing other people along the way, including a pregnant woman. Now, international efforts, they are being ramped up. There's 29 countries that have offered help. There are just some of them there in red. The Indonesian government initially rejected offers for aid, but then gave in when the magnitude of the disaster became clear. The police, they are clamping down on people taking goods from stores. You might remember earlier in the week they were turning a blind eye to it largely, but now they are making arrests. Um, and also, I want to show you this. This is how desperate... The Indonesian government has had to deal with a number of hoaxes that are circulating on social media. Um, let me bring you this. It is from uh, the government making, trying to make it clear. So this one is an image of the mayor of Palu, a, a hoax reported that he had been killed. He is still very much alive. Um, also, uh, many graphic pictures of victims among the rubble, but they're actually from other disasters from years ago. And while there is a volcano that is erupting much further to the north, there's false information about ash clo clouds and flowing lava that have been spread. This is from the Twitter page of the spokesperson for Indonesia's disaster agency. Now, he's leading the fight against hoaxes. Um, this translated says, this is not the eruption of Mount Soputan. This photo is a hoax. Don't share it. Just throw it out as if the Indonesian government don't have enough to deal with. Um, so if you want more details on Indonesia, two places to go, our website and also on the BBC News app. We're continually updating it. It has been uh, one of the stories that people really want to know more about throughout this week. Um, so bbcnews.com, one place to go. Now. It's been reported that Apple and Amazon are among U.S. companies and agencies who have had data stolen by Chinese spies. Bloomberg was reporting earlier that the data had been siphoned off via tiny chips inserted on server circuit boards, but the companies have denied the claim. Let me bring in the BBC's Samira Hussein for us in New York. Hi, Samira. Good to have you with us. So tell us a little bit more. What's this story all about? Thanks to David. Now, most of us love a selfie. The more interesting the selfie, the better, right? Well, not always according to a study let me bring this up this is from the u.s national library of of research actually let me bring it up there we go and um, you can find this online it's revealed more than 200 people died taking extreme selfies like the one we just saw but she was absolutely fine over the past six years drowning falling transport accidents were the most common cause of death the group is proposing that no selfie zones be introduced at dangerous spots such as mountaintops or tall buildings and lakes. Christian Hugel is from BBC Newsbeat and he told me more about the numbers that are involved. Thanks very much to Christian. All those people in those pictures were absolutely fine. That's it for this edition of Outside Source. Thanks for joining us.